at NASA. We do have to answer very hard questions and hopefully help industry. But in this particular area, there's lots and lots of questions, lots of interesting questions. In urban air mobility, it's really the wild, wild west. There's all kinds of different configurations being proposed right now. It's a fantastic area of aeronautics to be in. Every generation has its new thing, and now there's electric flight. Because of electric propulsion and the ability to put these propulsion units anywhere on the vehicle, a lot of companies immediately realized, wow, if we can do electric propulsion vehicles, maybe we could create a new industry out of this, a new transportation industry and relieve some of the traffic congestion on the ground by having short hop vehicles in urban areas. That's what urban air mobility is, a short hop of maybe 20 or 30 or 40 miles. Some people are saying this could happen in maybe five to 10 years, which it's possible. The technologies are there, but the bigger issues are in airspace control and then establishing airworthiness. NASA is starting to look at these concepts and how you would help all of these companies that are working on them get their vehicles certified and airworthy and safe to fly. So we're building these technology test beds to investigate those things. The LA-8 is a test bed where you could try lots of different technologies and it's a flying laboratory for urban air mobility. This is all about getting the data and getting the process down so that we can help the private sector. We'll be working with flight control companies, with airframe designers, with the FAA to help them develop regulations and airworthiness certification for these vehicles. The project is supposed to help a broad variety of different customers and accelerate the whole urban air mobility effort. VTOL stands for Vertical Takeoff and Landing. They have been built before. Back in the 50s and 60s, NASA was really doing a lot of VTOL research. Those were all fossil fuel powered, so they had turbine engines, uh, gas engines. And now we've shifted over to electric flight, which in some ways is a lot easier because you can put the electric motor wherever you need it. It can be along the wing, it can be on the tail, and each motor can be powered by a central battery pack or generator, and you don't have to have a turbine engine at every propulsion location. There's literally dozens and dozens of concepts being fielded out there. There's tilt wing, there's tilt duck, tilt rotor, lift plus cruise, there's tail sitters. So there's all kinds of variation on what you can do. This series of test beds that we're gonna be building, this first one is a tandem wing, but it's truly a modular test bed where you can change the configuration easily. You could remove just one of the wings and put a tail where the other wing was. The fuselage, though, has the data recording system and the power system in it, so it is kind of a common piece. We're just beginning now to figure out how to set up a test process and flight test procedure. You fly at different air speeds, you fly in different conditions, like turning conditions, different power levels, so descending, climbing. You try to expand the envelope so that you understand how the vehicle behaves in all different conditions. NASA is really focusing on how do you make these types of vehicles safer, how do you look at off-nominal conditions? Off-nominal meaning what if you lost a propeller and, or motor? Um, could you still control the vehicle and get it on the ground safely? Can you 
fly this in gusty winds and prove that you can do that. Trust, public trust in the technology is really important. Everybody involved from NASA, FAA, and all of the private companies developing this, they are very cognizant of that and trying to approach this and help accelerate the whole urban air mobility effort.